I'm going on a hiking trip. Me too. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Ugh. My pack loadout for my recent Ozark Highlands Trail backpacking trip. Coming right up. What is happening everyone? Rob here, R Pelton One. Thanks so much for tuning in. I just got back from a 55 mile backpacking trip down in Arkansas. The Ozark Highlands Trail is a fantastic trail, especially this time of year. Not very hot, the bugs weren't out yet, there was no snow like up here in Minnesota, so that was really, really nice. So I thought I'd give you a little tour of everything I took with me on that trip and maybe some thoughts and opinions about some of those items as well. Also, if you're new to the channel, I do a lot of outdoor adventure backpacking videos along with a lot of outdoor gear and gadget review videos. So if you're into that kind of thing, consider subscribing right down there so you don't miss a thing. First things first, the things that I was wearing on the trail during the day while hiking. Of course, I brought my Ultra Lone Peak 4s. These were very light. The water crossings, we walked right through. These dried so fast. However, I did think that the stack height, the cushion, was a little lacking after about 10, 12 miles. My feet really started to bug me. Uh, I think something like this, if it had a little bit thicker stack height, like like it, like the 3.5s are, I think these would have been a lot better. So I'm kind of searching for a new shoe, but for the most part, they performed, I think, how they were supposed to. Darn tough socks, the lighter weight pair. Tights, without underwear. I wore these commando. I wanted to try to avoid any chafing issues. I had a little, nothing to be overly concerned about, but these tights, I, mean, I think I bought them at Walmart and they worked completely fine. Above that, some Walmart Russell running shorts. Cheap, light, dries really, really fast, hard to beat, they work. For a shirt that I hiked in, in just about every day, I picked up a short sleeve Columbia Silver Ridge shirt. Very, very comfortable, dries fast. You can see I got a bunch of salt marks on there. Look how disgusting I am. Just leaking salt like a, like a sad, drippy salt shaker. But this shirt has been good and it smells like hell. <laughs> in the mornings, uh, initially hiking, I, I picked up the Outdoor Research Ferrasi hoodie. This thing has been amazing. I started out the day with this and I also slept in this. It's comfortable, it dries fast, it blocks you know some wind. I'm really glad I picked this up. And on top of my head is my quick dry Eco Gear. Eco Gear hat. I bought this in Maine on a canoe trip. And this hat has been awesome because this thing was full of salt as well. And I had to rinse it off from the river because it was disgusting. Also carried a map in my front left pocket of my running shorts. Big detailed Ozark Highlands Trail map. Very detailed. I recommend picking up this map if you plan on doing this trail. Other than that, my Timex Expedition. That's what I was wearing while I was hiking. And now for the contents of the pack. The pack is the Gregory Optic 48. I have a review on this pack. As a matter of fact, I have a review on a lot of the things in this pack, and I'll leave a playlist link right up there for you to check out of all the things I made reviews on of the things in this pack. The pack weight limit is about 30 pounds, and I had this thing packed at 30.23 pounds or something like that. That's with food, water, fuel, everything a hair over 30 pounds. Right on the outside, meshy sleeve, I kept my Crocs. I used these for exactly one water crossing and then found out quickly that that was gonna take way too much time because there was a lot of water crossings and it was easier just to walk through. However, for camp shoes, these things were fantastic. Get those hiking shoes off, put these little cushy, comfort, heavenly soles on. These were nice to have. On the bottom of the pack, I kept my Helinox Chair Zero. I was very, very glad I brought it because it was nice to have a place to sit down with a, with a backrest. However, at that trail, there were a lot of fire rings with these makeshift rock recliners around every fire ring, so I probably didn't need to bring this. 
So I'm kind of 50-50 on it. Uh, would, it. would it have been nice to lose an extra pound? Yeah. So I'm not mad I carried it. But uh, on this particular trip, if I were to do it again, I'd probably leave it at home. And for the hip belt pockets. On my left side, I carried my Apple AirPods. I put a little red X on it so I can identify it faster. These were awesome for not only watching movies and things at night, but especially during day three where I was night hiking and I had to bear down and go uphill a lot. I listened to Mike Rowe's podcast. It's called That's the Way I Heard It, a podcast for curious minds with short attention spans. So thanks, Mike Rowe, for the podcast. It really helped. I also carried my Nightcore NU25 headlamp. This thing has been fantastic. It, it held battery. I don't even think I charged it. Carry some chapstick, Burt B's coconut pear. I actually found out I really don't like this very much, but I already paid for it. So. <laughs> uh, and then my little pocket knife, which I never use. I didn't use this once. So I don't know if I'm going to need a knife on the trail anymore. That does it for the left side. Let's hop onto the right side. Right side hip belt pocket. My microfiber towel. Not only to wipe sweat, but to wipe off condensation, dry your feet, anything you want to do. This is kind of a makeshift uh, everything towel. Also in here, I carried these little, uh, these little salt tablets called Salt Stick. It, it helps uh, replenish some of the electrolytes that you lose, obviously with all the salt I have, during a hard, strenuous activity like hiking. And those salt pills, I think they really, really helped. I'll leave the link to those pills down in the description. You can read all the ingredients and what they do. I thought they helped, and they, you know, there was a little tasty, you know, crunchy treat, you know, about four times a day, something like that. On the front, you'll see I have the water bottles. These are the one liter smart water bottles. And carrying those are these ultralight meshy water bottle sleeves. I bought these on Etsy from uh, someone called Justin's Ultralight. He makes these specific for backpacks. They put a little weight up front, frees up some, some space in the side pockets. Um, but they were nice just to have your water bottles right there. I, I thought they worked great. And they're not that expensive, you know, for a set. So the right side pack pocket, I carried the chair pad for my Helinox Chair Zero. This will prevent you, your legs of your chair sinking into the ground. And that's pretty much all I carried in that. On the other side pocket, I carried... Hey, sorry, a little video snafu there. In that side pocket, I carried in this stuff sack the spreader bars for my Warbonnet Ridge Runner hammock, along with the pull-out pull mods for my Rainfly, the poles that sit outside my tarp to pull the tie-outs out. Also in that same pocket, I carried my cook kit. That's it. Sorry for the interruption. In the top lid of the pack, I carried my Sawyer Squeeze water filter, a little adapter for the water bladder, but I don't have the water bladder. What I seem to be missing is the ever new two liter water bladder to put dirty water in. I think I maybe left it in uh, um, Jeremy's car, the guy I went hiking with. <laughs> so picture an ever new water bottle. Found it. <laughs> uh, this is what I'm talking about. And I also carried my poop kit, minus the hand sanitizer. I lost that on day one. Let's hop into the main body of the pack. Right on top, I carried my food bag. Now, in my food bag, I had every single day's worth of food packaged separately in its own bag, day one, day two, day three. So I had four breakfasts, four dinners, and three lunches for this whole trip. I wanted to not pack as much food because I usually don't eat that much. And of course, I did it again. I brought back quite a bit of food. But the Z-Pax food bag, it's a Z-Pax food bag. Just under that, I carried my rain gear. Now this I recently picked up. This is a Black Diamond Stretch Rain Shadow Rain Jacket. Didn't wear it once, didn't need it once. So knowing what I know now, what I've carried it, probably not, but rain is rain. It happens when it happens. So rain pants, REI Talospheres. I did wear these around camp. These were my camp pants, early morning hiking pants maybe, um, but these were nice to have. 
to block out some of the cold, some of the wind when you're at camp. Because once you're done hiking and you settle down, your core temperature comes down and it gets a little chilly. Right by there is my ditty bag with all the little fun stuff that you need in a ditty bag, including a first aid kit, which I needed because I busted up my shin and I was bleeding. That was fun. Of course, my War Bonnet Ridge Runner hammock, my Chill Gorilla Rainfly with tent stakes in a Cuban fiber stuff sack. Underneath those is my REI Magma 850 puffy jacket. This thing surprised me. I loved having it at camp, just chilling, hanging out, relaxing. This helped keep you warm. It was comfortable and cozy. I really dug this jacket, glad I brought it. I have the Lynx 20 degree under quilt from War Bonnet for my Ridge Runner. This thing was awesome. I didn't get cold spots at all. I also did bring an under quilt protector by ZQ U2 R2 D2. Used it, probably didn't need it because it wasn't cold enough, but this will help keep the heat in underneath you if you get into colder temperatures. It'll stretch the temperature rating of your underquilt if needed. And my 40 degree hammock gear Econ Burrow top quilt. The coldest it got was 25 degrees. I stayed plenty warm in a 40 degree bag. I'm a warm sleeper. Uh, I wish, I still wish I had a sewn in foot box. I actually might sell this thing and buy a sewn foot box, but the 40 degree is perfect. And on the very bottom of the bag is my pillow stuff sack. This thing is pretty sweet. It's got like a nylon on one side and fleece on the other side. And in it, I carried my extra clothes that I use also as a pillow. So inside I had my big fluffy sleep socks. I had a clean shirt to specifically sleep in, but I also wore it hiking the last day because my other shirt was disgusting. Carried a pair of boxer shorts just in case I did have some chafing issues. I could throw these on. This would help create another barrier. Didn't end up needing them. Sleep pants. I brought a heavier pair of thermals because I knew my, my top quilt was uh, probably not going to be warm enough, but with these, I was completely fine. I was actually too hot a couple times, so I could have brought a lighter weight pair of thermals. And then lastly, an extra pair of darn tough socks. That is everything I brought on this trip, and I used 95% of it. Were there some things that I wish I would have brought that I didn't bring? Not really. Are there things that I brought that I should have left home? Probably. You know what I mean. But that's it. If you have any questions, about any of these gear items, about the trip. I'll have a link to my trip video right up here when I publish it, but leave a comment in the comment section below. Leave questions in the comment section below. I read all of them and I answer as many as I possibly can. But I appreciate you watching. Get all your gear together, throw it in a bag, hit the trail, and enjoy some of this big, beautiful world. But I appreciate you joining me. Look for my trip video coming out next Wednesday. If you like this video, you want to check out some more, I'll post some right here. Be sure to subscribe right down there so you don't miss a thing. And I have an Instagram account where I post a lot of the pictures of the trips I go on, and you can follow me on Instagram right up here. <sighs> Again, thanks for coming along. See you on the next one.